It's not a stricture by itself. The right of representation is steeped in law. You can't have an illegible person running around as a member of parliament for a constituency when he is not. It obviously leads to a mutilation of the sovereign will of the people of Assembly. They are better off now without someone who is parading as a member of parliament whilst he is not, whilst we await the decision of this court. The mere fact that they don't have to quote a member of parliament at this time does not in any event strip them of what they are entitled to as citizens of this country. This is a matter of the Lord Justice of the Supreme Court having made a determination of the application which was before them. If you say that I knew this was coming as if as if I'm a judge, I'm just a lawyer. I present my case before the court and the court rules. Indeed, I'm not a clever witness. Well, because of what we had put before the court, my expectation was that the constitution of the land will be upheld and that the constitution of the land will be given its highest priority. And that is what has happened. One cannot involve in a great gross breaches of the constitution and still go around holding himself as a citizen of this country. From day one, when the judgment of the High Court was rendered, it was manifestly obvious that James Jesse Grayson could not hold himself out as a member of parliament. He doggedly went on and was attending on to the business of government. But today, that road has been effectively blocked. You can tread the path for too long, but it doesn't give you the right to do things which are irregular, unlawful, and an affront to the Constitution.